In the previous video, we have shown you a summary of the rules of inference. We have the modus ponens, the modus tollens, hypothetical syllogism, disjunctive syllogism, the addition, simplification, conjunction, as well as the resolution. So the modus ponens is also known as the law of detachment or the mode that affirms. And it has this form, P, and P implies Q as the premise and Q as the conclusion. So let us try to have an example. Suppose we have a proposition P, it is snowing, and Q as I will go skiing. And suppose we have these two premises. If it is snowing, then I will go skiing. And it is snowing, therefore I will go skiing. So how can we prove that this argument is true? So what we can do is to convert it into its, um, into its argument form, wherein we will be replacing each propositional statement with the propositional the variables P and Q. So if P then Q is in this form, P implies Q, and it is knowing is actually just a proposition P, it is knowing. So given this two premise and it looks familiar and by the modus ponens, we can say that this argument is true. And we also have the modus ponens and still another example. Suppose we have P as 27196 is a multiple of seven and Q B 27196 plus 17 is a multiple of 7. Okay, so if 27196 is a multiple of 7, then we can say that 27196 plus 17 is a multiple of 7. And 27196 is a multiple of 7. So we have two premises. And we say that the conclusion is 27196 plus 17 is indeed a multiple of seven. So let us represent it into its argument form. We have P implies Q, and this is simply the P, therefore Q. But the statement P is false, okay? Since um, 27196 is a multiple of seven, is false. In other words, this is not a multiple of seven. So um, since P is false, then um, in order for this to be true, then the Q should also be false. Okay, so, so that um, false implies false will result to false. All right, so yeah. And we also have the modus tollens, aka denying the consequence. So it has this form, not Q, and P implies Q, therefore not Q. So let P be, it is freezing now. And Q is also, it is raining now. And we have these two premises. It is not raining now. Therefore, that is simply the negation of Q. And if it is freezing now, then it is raining now. So that is P implies Q. Therefore, it is not freezing. So representing that into its negation, it, into its um, argument form. So this is simply, again, just a not Q. And this statement, if it is freezing now, then it is raining now, is P implies Q. So therefore, it is not freezing, that is, simply the denegation of not of this statement P. Okay, so since this form follows this uh, form of modus tollens, then we can see that this argument is valid. And we also have the hypothetical syllogism, aka the transitivity of implication or chain argument. So we have this form P implies Q, and Q implies R, therefore P implies R. 
So you can see here a familiar na Q in both of the statements. Okay, so suppose we have the statements, let P be I go swimming, Q is I will stay in the sun too long, and R be I will get a sunburn. So suppose we have these two statements, if I will go swimming, then I will stay in the sun for too long. So this is simply the P implies Q, okay? And if I stay in the sun for too long, so we can see here this first, uh, the last two statements, and I will get a sunburn, Q implies R. So we have this conclusion, if I go swimming, then I will get a sunburn. So that is simply the P implies R. And since it follows the form of hypothetical syllogism, then we can say that this argument is true. We have the disjunctive syllogism, aka the disjunction elimination or the or elimination. And it has two premises, P or Q, and not P, therefore Q. So what did we eliminate from here? Since um, we have the P and its negation. So we are eliminating P and not P. So what's left is the conclusion Q, which is true. All right. So for instance, we have two statements P and Q. It is raining and it is sunny. And we have the two premises. It is either raining or sunny. And it is not raining. So therefore, it is sunny. So putting that into their argument form. So it is either raining or sunny can be P or Q. And it is not raining is simply the negation of P. Therefore, we can say that it is sunny and that is Q. Okay. And by this disjunctive syllogism, we can say that this argument is valid or this statement is valid. Okay. And we also have the addition or the disjunction introduction. So it has the form P or the premise P, therefore P or Q. We already mentioned in the previous video that if P is true, then if we um, add another or if we connect it with another proposition, using an or na connective regardless of the value of Q, if P is true, then it follows that P or Q will always be true, okay? Suppose we have this statement, P, it is sunny today, and Q is, it is cloudy today. So we have a statement, P, it is sunny today. Therefore, it is either sunny or cloudy today is true. So it has this form, P, and um, the conclusion, um, if this is true, it is indeed sunny. So regardless if it is cloudy or not, then it is always true that it is sunny. Okay. And we also have the simplification, aka the conjunction elimination. And it has one premise, P and Q, therefore P. Or it could actually be P and Q, therefore Q. Since um, Assuming that the premise is true, then it means that um, both P and Q should be true. Okay, so suppose we have these two statements let P be it is cloudy and Q be it is raining. Okay, and we have this statement it is both cloudy and raining. So, therefore, we can say that it is cloudy. So, we can represent it as P and Q. And therefore, P. And using the simplification, the form, we can see that this argument is valid. And suppose we have the conjunction, aka the conjunction introduction. And it has this form, P and Q as premises, therefore, P and Q. Okay. So we can just assume that if both P and Q are both true, then this must be true, then this conjunction should also be true, okay? So suppose we have these two statements, let P be it is cloudy and Q is it is raining. 
So we have these two premises. It is cloudy and it is raining. Therefore, we can say that it is both cloudy and rain. So looking at its argument form, since it follows the conjunction, we can see that the statement is valid. And lastly, we have the resolution, which has these two premises, P or Q, and not P or R. So therefore, Q or R. So we have simply eliminated the P and not P, which is its negation. So we have Q or R. So example, let P be it is sunny and Q be it is cloudy and R be it is raining. So we have this first two statement. It is either sunny or it is cloudy. And we have another statement. It is either not sunny so, or it is raining. So therefore, it is either cloudy or raining. Okay. So putting that into its argument form, it follows the uh, form of resolution. We can see that the statement is valid.